Hello everyone and welcome to ProRPA.com. Hope you guys are keeping up with the weekly content that I'm posting on my blog. If not, I would ask you to please do check out all the blog posts in the legible sequence as they were posted because, you know, that would make the whole learning experience for you much easier and comprehensible. Okay, so for this week, uh, we'll be discussing about recordings. And I have given a pretty decent um, overview and the theoretical explanation of different types of recordings that are available within uh, UiPath Studio. And uh, this week, we're gonna have a demo on the basic recording and on the desktop recording. So these are like two of the four different types of recordings that are um, offered within UiPath. And uh, basically for uh, basic recording, um, we try to record the user actions by simply doing them, by simply performing them on the screen and uh, the corresponding workflow is generated. But this sort of, this type of recording is um, limited to very small operations. The reason being, um, like there are some uh, like concerns with the robustness and uh, with the identification of UI elements. So um, having said that, of course, there are ways to, um, you know, because of the workflow and the design of the overall product, we can make changes to the different activities within uh, which has been created as an output to that recording. And uh, we can always increase the reliability, make it more efficient and make it, you know, in a way that you know it works at all times or m most number of times and uh, I've also briefly touched upon uh, the selectors which um, are you know once we have some activities or some UI elements we can always go into the UI Explorer and check out you know what are the different selectors available for different uh, you know elements right let's say for this title bar uh, we hit has a push button so here are like the selectors, but we're going to delve into this uh, in detail later. So, okay, having said that, let's get started on the basic recording. So uh, what we're going to do is um, we're going to, we have a notepad window and um, we are going to enter some data and uh, we're going to get that, we're going to enter that data in a particular format and a font size and stuff. And uh, we'll see, um, you know, uh, what the workflow is generated in the basic recording right okay so let's get started here in the recording we have the four different types of uh, re recordings that are supported we choose the basic one and over there we get the basic recording uh, you know this toolbar and um, alongside the recording option we have a few other um, activities so that you know in case you're not able to do a few activities then you can always insert those relevant activities within the UiPath workflow designer um, manually but this can be done within the recording session itself so you don't have to you know like uh, save it go to that particular like drag and drop stuff all that stuff is sort of gone in, in, in when you're using the recording so um, the basic you know the basic importance of uh, uh, having this functionality is that you know you'll have a skeleton workflow that you can use and you can build on top of it your actual business solution so that you can get an efficient and um, and and a optimally you know um, decent solution at a very very less time okay so um, having said that let's get started with the basic recording so I have started the basic recording I want to enter this data um, I clicked on it, the left click, and it's asking me to type the desired value. I want to type, I love www.prorpa.com, right? It says press enter when you're done. So I pressed the enter and it entered the data. Now I want, I want to change the format. Once I do that, once I click on the format, it says uh, that, you know, this is a free element. Do you want to use an indicator? I'll tell you about the, sorry, about the anchors. I'm gonna um, discuss anchors uh, in subsequent blog posts, but just for reference sake, anchor is like um, if you are not able to, let's say, or you're, there's a possibility that you know, uh, 
an element might not be uh, identified correctly by by the workflow uh, on this uh, like and from an external application then what you can do is you can um, put that in an anchor stage and anchor defines a reference point so let's say you have a label and a text box the label says like uh, date of birth and the text box is where you actually put your date of birth so um, this label is acting as a reference for that text box this is what the anchor does but um, for this recording we don't want any of the anchors throughout the whole recording session so I just yes, and I don't want anything and uh, then I clicked on the font and in here I got another window and let's say I chose the font as Cooper uh, bold uh, and uh, size 24 right and I click on okay these elements are getting identified it's not like a screen recorder right unlike like the older automations so I just clicked on okay and here it is once I'm done uh, with all the operations that I need to be automated I simply press escape or right click on the mouse and I get the um, this panel again the recording panel and I click on save and exit once I do that the whole recording sequence is ready I open this and you see here are the stages or the activities for first activity says that you know you can type into this editable text um, in this area within the notepad here right then I click on the menu item and uh, then I click on the font option I choose the Cooper right uh, as the font I choose the size as uh, 24 and I click on OK see everything has been created automatically all the activities and another beautiful feature of UiPath is uh, or let's say the recording feature within UiPath is that the names given to these activities are very self-explanatory I mean are pretty self-explanatory right as you can see so um, what about we because see it was created as a standalone sequence so what we gotta do is we gotta connect this to the flowchart this could have been a sequence diagram as well uh, but again we can put a sequence diagram within a flowchart or vice versa everything is sort of supported in here so that's all good and um, we can name this as you know a notepad exercise or something but that's totally up to you I'm saving this going back and let's try to run it again let's see if our program works or not right I just ran it and it wrote on it it chose the font copper size and everything is okay okay you see the problem here the problem is because it didn't clear out this data so it wrote again um, because the cursor was here in the, on the notepad screen it right right next to it I love pro rpa.com again right what you may have wanted I'm not sure if you were looking for this output if you were looking for it all good but what you probably would want is to erase the data first and then write it down again right so for that um, either you can you have like a couple of options uh, first option which um, might you know come to your mind is that you know you um, add another activity in here where you will select all the data and just delete it or something from the notepad window or or you know um, like I don't know control a or delete or you just go hover your mouse or select all the data using the mouse and uh, uh, clicking on backspace button using the hotkeys or stuff um, but there's a better option always always when you have an activity this is the activity which is writing data right and this is the activity when it is running for the second time is writing sort of concatenatedly uh, on the previous string that was already there so if we check out the properties you see do you see empty field there it is yes that is correct you just empty the field right that means you want it to be emptied first before you start writing and should be all set see it actually deleted everything font again same it works say if you uh, want to check whether this program is um, decent in the sense that you know um, you want to change uh, font size instead of 24 you want it 26 
you want to see if you pass the value 26 it's going to work or not let's check that out as well run format font and you see 26 was chosen all right so this is a pretty decent program small operation automated you don't have to look for the activities you just simulated it and uh, the workflow was created automatically and uh, another better like very sophisticated part of uh, this recording or any recording in uh, UiPath is that it gets you informative screenshots you see it's a type into activity and this is the text that you're putting in the notepad uh, window but you have this you know that this red colored um, like the area that it, that's been marked to showcase where exactly your data or where exactly your activity is gonna um, work so um, if you let's say by any chance you don't like this screenshot and you want your activities like the way they used to be when you were drawing all the programs by yourself all the workflows just remove the screenshot from here that's how it used to be right if you remember so um, it's totally up to you it's good to have the screenshots as well I mean doesn't hurt and it makes the program more comprehensible but sometimes during like large and complex projects of course it becomes a little I don't know tacky or difficult to manage with and you wouldn't want to go that route so you can you can delete it it, it, it works okay now um, the thing is if you would have clicked anywhere you see there's there's no like you know uh, like everything is treated as one single um, entity in the sense that you know um, this is your working space area this is your sort of menu bar in the notepad window right and uh, I have already mentioned the concept of containers uh, in programming languages it is pretty common and what it does is um, see um, a container for next just for, from an example standpoint uh, this whole area where the menu bar exists could be treated as one particular um, container and the area where you are writing all the text in the notepad could be treated as another container that way once you have a container defined it makes it easier for your program to identify the elements within that container and uh, the reliability of the program increases right so um, let's try to use um, you know the concept of containers and the partial selectors and everything by using uh, another recording sequence I'm gonna show you the difference this is the desktop recording right what I'm gonna do is actually let me first delete this data right because I wanna start exactly at the same starting point when I created the basic uh, recording um, sequence workflow and uh, we're gonna start with the desktop recording with exactly the same operations as we finished off with the basic recording okay so here it is I started the desktop recording I want to write the same stuff I love .com. I want to enter I could have actually checked the empty field which was there right away and uh, I clicked on format I don't want any anchors I mentioned this with that time as well then font I want to choose the copper font let the style be this and size as 24 and okay and the workflow is ready let's check that out by clicking escape or right clicking or something and save and exit and the recording sequence has been generated as you can see let me show you uh, this is notepad exercise um, via desktop recording okay okay and I can set this a start node so me that means I've connected it to the start node but I'm gonna show you okay so uh, this there's another let's you know uh, like this is the first activity that we were doing was uh, writing down in the uh, notepad textual area the text which is I love proRPA.com and as you can see that was um, like that part of the program along with clicking on the format was um, put in a separate uh, sequence or in a separate activity called attach window what attach window is gonna do is it's gonna attach the execution of the workflow to the untitled notepad so that means it's gonna look for that particular element whatever it is that particular window and it is gonna attach the workflow over there so that 
the work actually executes or happens or takes place in that window itself. That way it routes in a much better and efficient fashion and the reliability of the program increases pretty nicely, right? And um, as I have mentioned in the theoretical concept as well, that um, for a desktop uh, recording, using the desktop recording uh, methodology, we can actually create pretty large and complex projects. But the condition, the contingency is that you have to check and see for yourself all the underlying activities and decide whether they're going to solve the purpose or not. And you have to probably run them a few times. So more or less, it's going to create a very good, decent, reliable skeleton workflow for you to leverage. Okay. Um, this was the first activity within the attach window. You can see in the attach window menu, which was this menu bar, uh, you can see, let me show you. See, uh, once you clicked on format, right, you have another uh, drop down menu right so this drop down menu is actually treated as a separate container because earlier it was not there right earlier it was just a blank window uh, of notepad now once you clicked it you have some change because you have a new drop down menu that is treated different and it's showing the informative screenshot right so this window is what is being treated and all the actions which is which are going to take place in this activity are going to happen in this particular window the drop down menu itself which means it is going and clicking on that font font option right that that was all the part in the third window once you clicked on the font you got this new window pop-up right which actually is the font window where you select the font size style um, designs the type or, or even the scripting and stuff so this is where the third container of the workflow comes into picture and in here you have the informative screenshot you choose the font you choose the size and you click on OK because everything is in this window itself right so as you can see different containers were used and uh, the program was divided very logically into different parts and it makes the program look much 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 better right do you remember the one change that we did it once we um, once we created the basic recording um, yes that is correct what we did was we emptied the field so we're gonna do the same thing again here because it's not gonna do that automatically but on and all the program is same and better let's run this this is for the desktop recording and you can see everything is good perfect okay so we did uh, the same program it accomplished both of the tasks but uh, the desktop recording definitely is a better option and and um, it was able to I mean if you can of course you have to look into the activities and the overall workflow but it is still comprehensible it is um, dividing the data into containers it is going to identify the elements within the containers in a much broader and optimal fashion and um, those are like pretty much the basic differences uh, between the basic recording and desktop recording. Um, you'll get to play around with, you know, um, the properties of different activities that you might be doing, um, like clicking or, uh, or, or launching an application or, you know, typing into a text area. And, you know, um, like, like, you know, I have actually touched on this before as well, that, you know, if you want to continue, if there's some action which is like not of, not of high priority and you can actually skip it sort of if you're not able to do it then you know you want to continue with the rest of the workflow then you have continue on error property and, and all other properties are there so feel free to play around uh, this is like your baby you know you, you can do anything you want <laughs> yeah so um, this is pretty much it for this week hope you guys enjoyed the overall video demo and uh, next week, uh, we're going to be touching upon the other two um, recording types, which includes the web recording, specific for web, web applications. And for Citrix one, I'm not sure um, we'll be going through the demo, but this is more for like VPN um, or, or uh, like the, you know, the virtual environments. And of course, the Citrix one as well. And um, it uses a lot of screen scraping methods. We're going to go through the screen scraping because that's an important concept. 
but going it on a Citrix machine, I'm not sure if that will be doable. But uh, of course, we'll be uh, providing very good theoretical explanation with screenshots and stuff so that it becomes um, easier and, and, and a, a very decent learning experience for everybody. All right. Um, thank you very much, guys. Um, hope you guys liked it. Um, please do subscribe, share, and um, post your comments and feedback on the blog post on my YouTube channel with the same name, ProRPA.com. And uh, happy automating. Thank you very much. Bye.